Hello, happy Friday, and welcome into Live with Lighthouse. This is the show where we guide you to the, to the technology and talent solutions to drive you forward. We're live from the Lighthouse Technology Services offices. My name is Joe Ray, and really excited to have everyone here. Thank you for everyone who's joining the show live this morning. If you're watching the recording on YouTube, you're in for a really great presentation today. Uh, lots of good energy coming into the show today. Last night was 43 North Finals in Buffalo. Really exciting night to celebrate our tech and startup community and really enjoyed all that as well. So shout out to everybody who was involved in making that possible. Uh, very excited for a really engaging presentation today. Um, I've gotten to know this individual who's joining us on the show today for a couple months this year. Um, really bright individual, lots of uh, project management expertise, and I'm going to bring him on stage right now. Glad to introduce Jeff Manhart. Hey, Jeff, good morning. Show today. It's great to be here. Awesome. So glad that you could take the time with us to Join us on this Friday and uh, for everybody tuning in, I was wondering, Jeff, if you could just kick us off and tell us a little bit about your work and who you are. Yeah, sure. So I am a director of project management for a global food service company. I also am the past president of PMI Buffalo, the project management institute chapter here in Buffalo. Uh, I teach for a number of local organizations and like to do some speaking like we're doing today. Love it. And and actually, Jeff, I'd love if we could start too. I, you mentioned uh, earlier when we met earlier this summer uh, that you were finishing a master's program in organizational leadership. And I know you were really passionate about that and going through that. And curious if you want to share a little bit about that and how that ties It was fantastic. I learned a lot about different leadership styles. I learned my own style as a situational leadership style that focuses on the foundation of trust to help build teams. Uh, so a lot of exciting stuff there it was uh, really well worth it. Awesome. Awesome. And trust is such a huge factor in project management too. making sure everybody in a, in a team is on is on the same page on the same you know task and has their next steps and whatnot. Uh, and really excited to get into our presentation today. And I know you've done a lot of work and a lot of research around generative AI and how uh, that's impacting project management as well. So uh, for everybody yeah. who's tuned into some previous Live with Lighthouse episodes today, we're going to try something a little new here. We're going to shake it up because we're on episode 16 now and we've got uh, uh, some slides based presentation from Jeff today as well. Um, Jeff, can you just give us a little bit of background here on this, too? I know you've given this presentation recently as well to uh, PMI. Absolutely. So my thought process was around how do we think about generative AI in regards to project management and project managers? Is it going to destroy civilization as we know it or is it really a virtual assistant? And that's the journey we'll talk about today. Yeah, I'm really excited to get into it. And um, obviously, AI has been such a hot button topic across every industry for all of 2023. And I can't even imagine what's going to come in the future. But I know we're going to get into that a little bit, too. Um, Jeff, maybe we just start from a common language aspect and how you look at defining artificial intelligence. That's a great point. I leverage Gartner's definition that it applies advanced analysis and logic based techniques to interpret events, to support and automate decisions. and to take action. Excellent. Excellent. And um, when it comes to project management specifically, um, yourself, other analysts in the industry, how are they looking at uh, how AI is going to impact that? You know, Gartner analysts predict that in, by 2030, the AI software driven by conversational AI and machine learning and robotic process automation used for gathering, reporting and tracking data will eliminate 80% of what a project management office task look like. And right, so that kind of scares people when they hear that, you know, how does that impact me as the project manager? Mm -hmm. Yeah, is, is it gonna eliminate a lot of things that are routine and open up the opportunities you think there? I think that's something we'll explore in a minute. Let's do it, let's do it. Um, we're gonna go on a little bit here. I know you've got a great chart here. Um, natural language processing is really part of the technology that makes all these AI tools work. Obviously, Chat GPT being one that's really in the mainstream right now. Um, walk us through this a little bit, Jeff, here and what you're looking at. Yeah, no, absolutely. And artificial intelligence includes a number of components. The supervised learning that you've heard of with large language models that are trained on data from the internet, the unsupervised data that really talks about the internal structure of a data, combine that with reinforcement learning, you get deep learning. Think of IBM Watson. Right. If you saw that a couple of years ago when it was beating chess champions and beating folks in jeopardy, that's all deep learning. That's all those pieces there in the middle. When you add the natural language processing where it can understand positive intent or identify parts of speech like verbs and nouns, you get this generative 
pre-trained transformer. And that's the GPT and chat GPT. That helps take that large language model and generate human-like responses. It, it's really incredible to see, you know, the, like you said, those human-like responses, but those responses in a number of forms as well. Obviously, within within uh, project management, we're looking at text-based, even just insight decision-based collecting data and things like that, but just seeing photos and videos and graphics and all these yeah. things that, that these GPT models can put out is, is incredible. Yeah, um, I asked the chat GPT one time, to create a project schedule uh, based on building the Bill Stadium. And it was able to Thanks. list <laughs> all those components uh, that, and put some duration to them. So it was, uh, it was pretty amazing to see that. There we go. And we'll get into it too, where the overlap of even doing something that simple of building a project plan and you know being a project manager on the ground and navigating that plan and adjusting and whatnot and what that looks like. Yes. Um, all these AI things, it's great because there's so much education now about the technology that that's underneath these tools. So many new startups, so many new tools, you know, adapting and using these uh, large language models, like you mentioned there, too. Uh, but looking at this timeline right here, here, Jeff, like artificial intelligence is definitely not a new phenomenon. It's definitely escalated right now. <laughs> but look, but look, but looking back, what's what's kind of the timeline? Yeah, that's a great point, because in 1956, Dartmouth Summer Research Project uh, created the foundation of AI as we know it. You know, fast forward 30 years, a number of researchers developed the modern neural network, and it took almost another 30 years before OpenAI, which is the organization behind ChatGPT, to be created. And then within the last seven years, it's ramped up considerably. OpenAI has produced three versions of ChatGPT in those in that period and made their latest version 3.5 available at the end of 2022, which set off this phenomenon, right? This exciting piece where people could really leverage uh, the technology for the first time uh, for free and see what it could do for them. So I see a whole raft of virtual assistants coming in 2024 across nearly every tool set that a project manager might use. And, uh, you know, and even just a few years from now, we might see an art gallery that's solely focused on AI created artwork. Wouldn't that be interesting? It, it would certainly be different for sure. And, and being able to, you know, translate the medium of, of traditionally, we have artists who are working in paint or watercolor or different things. And it is almost an art form when you're talking about working with something like chat GPT or another AI tool that it's really dependent on how you craft a prompt, the in, the information that you give it and the parameters that you give it. And then using using those language models like we were talking about too, it generates the best possible response to the prompt that you've been given. Rather that's than true. There's a, yeah, that's absolutely true. There's a whole uh, section now about prompt engineering that's coming mm -hmm. to the table for so that humans can think about how do we interact with this new technology. Yeah. And humans are getting to interact with that technology more than ever now. Like you said, too, ChatGPT 3.5 was really a catalyst for a lot of that as well. And really what's bringing AI to the forefront in all these conversations is because it is more accessible to people. Uh, so yes. now I've got a little bit here and talking about a lot of uh, different tools in project management that are utilizing AI. Um, some of my favorites on here, I see ChatGPT, I see Jasper, I see Notion. Shout out to a lot of those. Uh, Jeff, we'll get into, let's get into a couple ones that you use every day. Uh, you know, what I, what I love to think about is how project managers do their job. 90% of what we do is communicate. We do a lot of that communication in meetings. And if you think, think about the way that we work today, maybe building an agenda ahead of time, going through the meeting, maybe taking handwritten notes along the way, maybe using a recording to catch what we missed, writing those meeting minutes afterwards. Technologies from Fireflies and Adam.ai now do that for us, right? So we can focus on the meeting and the output of that meeting. They can develop an agenda based on the previous agendas. They can listen through the transcription and create a summary of those notes, generate action items, and then distribute that to the team, all by clicking a button, right? And then letting the generative AI do its work. It's, it's really incredible to see. And that also touches on something too, Jeff, uh, think, thinking about how technology is enabling more human connection, that something like these tools like Fireflies and, and Atom 
um, if you're not, you know, looking down on a notepad and scribbling notes all the time that you know the AI tool is going to going to have those all aggregated for you. You can spend more time engaging one on one with someone and and getting to the root of what you need to. Absolutely. And as project managers, we work with people. That's what we do. We lead teams. Right? And so it, it's better when we can take spend more time leading the team rather than the administrative components of creating the minutes or thinking about building out an agenda. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's great and, and a great place and something that's accessible too and, and easy, easy to use and get started with. Yes. Um, I know we've got some different project management software plans here too. Um, yeah. You know, why don't you talk about a couple of these? Yeah, absolutely. So project management software for project managers is key to thinking about how we track our tasks, how do we identify risks and issues, all those components. And there's technology right now available from uh, ClickUp, OnePlan, Rike. You know, not that I you know get I have any endorsements of any of these products. Just my work uh, in the industry, learning about these tools. And what what a lot of them have done is to build generative AI in to take all those lessons learned from either our own projects or projects that the large language models have been built on, to then create a starting point for your project and your team. Uh, it's just tremendous what they've developed. You know, take, take for example, a marketing plan. You can say, hey, I have to build a marketing project plan by this afternoon to address this new thing we're gonna be developing. And you can leverage generative AI in ClickUp or these other tools to start from a from point of lessons learned, not from a blank sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. And it's incredible too, just thinking about the raw amounts of data that these systems have all collected, that they can draw from decades of experience. And like you said, in marketing planning, for for example, too, and be able to pull so much different context from different industries to, to create the best marketing plan based on your prompt and your needs and things like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really fascinating. It really is. And then yeah. um, I know we've also we've also got down here Microsoft Copilot. Uh, which is kind of more of like a comprehensive business analytics AI, from what I'm understanding too. What can you, you know, what's yeah, what's interesting is in May, Microsoft announced a series of co-pilots across their product suite, including Office 365. In November 1st, they're implementing that to the public, where you can have co-pilots sit alongside Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, Outlook, and Teams, and leverage it to summarize that those meeting minutes which allow you to copy and paste and send those out to the team or to take a powerpoint presentation and start a, so starting from scratch you can leverage that word document you cr created as maybe a summary you can build that in and copilot will create the powerpoint from that word document incredible the leverage is, yeah it is incredible one of the things that i learned is that microsoft is a large investor in open AI. So they have the ability to leverage the technology that they've developed and include things like uh, DALI for visualizing that PowerPoint deck uh, that you, you just can't do on your own. Mm -hmm. it, it's incredible. And it's it's the next generation of, uh, I always remember, uh, what was his name in Microsoft Word, Clippy, the little assistant that yeah. helped, uh, <laughs> can help you with a few small things here and there. And this, this is like 10 steps further, the next step of the next step of Clippy being Absolutely. able to help you turn a Word document into a PowerPoint is, is unbelievable just to think of the capabilities that we're at right now. Well, and I'll just tag on one more thing there. One of the yeah. things I saw in a video recently from Microsoft, uh, they've got a whole YouTube channel on uh, their M365 space. In Excel, you can use natural, natural language processing to have it do the functions and formulas that you don't remember. I right? can never remember how to split a cell uh, by a by an at sign like like as an example with an email, I can just say that and it'll do it for me. Incredible, In incredible, just just what's capable what's capable right now. Um, yes. And anyway, we're going to move on a little bit. We're move on a little bit too into just talking about the types of work. Um, you know, we talked about a lot of the different tools, the technologies that are out yeah. there as well. Um, what are some of these kind of different jobs that might be uh, best supported by AI to, to help other work? You know, it's a, it's a great point to recognize that there are a number of roles that AI may just uh, take over at some point. One of them is in counting kind of the bookkeeping space where you're doing the tedious 
uh, highly accurate kind of work. A lot of what AI, generative AI specifically can do is a lot of that detailed task. So that's, it's a great opportunity there. In customer service, you know, chatbots are already doing most of that work already and may resolve up to 86% of all requests in the future. We know that we get a bunch of robocalls already from telemarketers. That piece has already all but been taken over. And Grammarly's done a lot of the proofreading for me already. I used that in uh, my master's class this past year, and it's been very helpful, very helpful. Uh, and, you know, and Joe, to your point about market before, the market analysis where you have to analyze a lot of data to try to figure out trends or figure out what the next thing is that you want to focus on, AI can help with that. So you can focus on doing the work instead of figuring out what you should go do. Mm -hmm. it, all, all these things here are, are things that we look at that are so important to businesses being able to, to do these tasks on, on a daily, weekly basis, so looking at accounting and even as something that's, that's just so, you have to be organized, you have to have everything together. Um, but it is something that's very data focused and could be you know automated into a system all these different things, these are jobs that look like ripe areas, like you said, that AI could take over and really support um, teams, you know, to be able to help them focus on other tasks. Um, but obviously AI can't do everything right now. Um, so I know you've got some some uh, development here on skills AI hasn't mastered and where the, where the human touch beyond AI can still make an impact. And you know, think about the germ of the idea, right? That art of the possible where writers, marketers, software developers, and graphic designers, they're all in that creative space where they create that initial spark. Yes, you can leverage a ChatGPT or DALI to kind of develop your thought into something that can be produced. We as humans are the ones that can uh, think about how to manipulate emotions or how to think about how people feel. Right? That Those are pieces that really cannot be taken over. And I'd be remiss in saying our C-suite and project managers, those roles, those are people driven, right? Mm -hmm. Successfully leading people requiring, requires us to understand how they behave and what factors impact their actions, what motivates them. Those are human skills that a machine just really will never take over. Exactly. And, and like we've said a couple of times here already, that's the best part of all these AI developments is that it's going to enable project managers to take more time to focus on the on the human element and all those things of connecting with their team, making sure people are in the best position to to do the best work possible. Uh, get Absolutely. more opportunities for those. So I know we're going to get into a little bit here as well. Obviously, AI powered project management and thinking about how these two aspects are going to come together. Um, what are you looking at here? Yeah, just to recognize the now that we've said project managers are going to be here to stay because we we're a people driven organization, a people driven uh, you know, role, we can leverage AI to help power our success. Uh, I'd mentioned lessons learned before. That's like the number one thing we talk about in project management teaching is to leverage what's been done before. Well, scope, schedule, budget and risks, all those things that we can connect to uh, previous examples can be leveraged as our starting point. We can also leverage AI to think about risks that the team may not think about, right? Leveraging data to say, look, there might be a risk here you have to think about. And here's a plan of action that could be applied based on previous uh, work that was done with this type of risk. So those are great ways to leverage AI to help you identify scope, schedule, budget, and risks. And then from there, resource management is a real tedious kind of work. We have to think about hours people are working or in agile projects, that velocity that folks are working, all that math around uh, resource allocation can be powered by generative AI. Mm -hmm. and, and there's there's so many tools already out there to to enable all that. Um, you know, really looking forward to the future of, of you know, what this new tech is going to enable. Um, and want to talk a little bit about about some of the risks as well too. Obviously, um, it's not going to AI is not going to accomplish everything too. And there's definitely a lot of uh, ethical and technical concerns. So uh, if you want to take it away, think about yeah, that. absolutely. One of the things that I saw in Microsoft's promotion material is that uh, you know anything it generates uh, could be in, uh, inaccurate. You know, ChatGPT actually says that as well at the bottom of their screen. And that's that's a great starting point. This image here from Dali was created by somebody saying, show a hurricane over Miami. 
So this was not a real hurricane over Miami, but Dolly created it to be such. So thinking through that, I think is important to recognize, which kind of leads into uh, we can get lulled into an over-reliance of AI. If it does 99 or 98% of the meeting summary really good, and you say, all right, I'm just going to copy and paste that and send it out. Without looking at it, we can become over-reliant where there could be mistakes. You know, I had a person uh, with a, a person on our team, her name was Amy with an A-I-M-E-E. -E, mm. And it, it was, uh, with, you know, chat GPT and other things generated it uh, with her name is AMY, a standard you know, naming convention. So I had to go back and, and realize that and change that. Otherwise, yeah, wouldn't be talking to the right person. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, then, the human context integrating there with, um, with with the technical talent of getting most of exactly. It. Yeah, that's a great point. And it's important to recognize data and security because uh, as we develop these large language models, a lot of organizations are uh, wanting to want to ensure that whatever they use the technology for doesn't feed a public large language model. And there's some of the organizations that I've done research on. Microsoft's a good example. All of your uh, generative uh, work, all your natural language processing is done within your own space. It doesn't go out to the cloud or go out to other organizations. So recognizing that's an important part of data privacy and security. We'll also re remember that these large language models are developed on publicly available data and that data can have bias in it, right? And can, we can, it can lead to legal and ethical concerns. So, Part of those are all risks we have to think about as we explore leveraging the technology and remembering that using that without the, the human touch is uh, is a challenge. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is. Thanks for walking through those, Jeff. It's it's yeah. interesting to see when you talk about the lack of human touch right there. One place that I see that working in marketing a lot is content creation. That mm -hmm. if you go to you know a place like LinkedIn or Twitter or you go to read a blog. I feel like there's been enough chat GPT created content out there that you can start to get a sense of, hey, it's got some common writing style when you're not giving it a specific prompt to, <laughs> to follow a certain voice and you can kind of pick up on some of the cues and sentence structures of, yeah, I think I think a robot wrote this. So very important <laughs> not to get into that over-reliance on AI. I watched a, an, or listened to an NPR podcast that talked about generative AI and they leveraged it to create their podcast for that day. Uh, and they did make a lot of changes to it because it lacked that human touch. Mm -hmm. It really does. And, and actually, while we're here, Jeff, if I can touch on one more thing, too, just knowing that this is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, I'm really glad you mentioned the data privacy and security part. Uh, is there anything else that you can point to just to kind of harp on the point of you really shouldn't be putting, uh, you know, any sort of personal or company confidential information into any of these systems that are powered yeah. by, like you said, those public large language models. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, ChatGPT is that one that everyone's using, which is great. Uh, but using that, if you're going to leverage that, uh, you have to recognize that all of your prompts, all of the responses, that goes into the large language model that's publicly available and teaches that that large language model. So if you're gonna, if you're thinking about how to work on your own marketing campaign within your organization, you start to Think through your confidential data. Don't put that confidential data in that chat GPT because that becomes public, right? And so a number of uh, you know, legal uh, and data privacy concerns can, you know, can come out of that. So just don't do that, right? You leverage AI within your organization. Don't use your confidential information in chat GPT. Perfect. Giving me flashbacks to uh, driver's ed class. My classroom instructor had a very stern, don't do that. I, I, I was talking about something we shouldn't be doing out on the road. So there you great, go. great points there. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, I just want to leave a quick reminder for everyone watching on LinkedIn. Thanks to everyone tuning in today. Uh, if you've got any questions for us just about anything that we're talking about with these generative AI tools, how it's going to impact project management in the future, how it might impact your work, um, we're going to have some time for Q&A at the end here. Uh, so feel free to drop those comments. Thanks to everyone tuning in live on LinkedIn today. Um, Jeff, I know you've really done a lot of research just kind of into the people aspect too of, you know, and we talked about it too, just right at the, the end of the last slide there about the lack of uh, human touch when you're over relying on AI. Um, you know, what are these tools going to enable 
project managers to focus on in terms of managing people? That's a great point because project managers lead people, right? People lead projects, people move those projects forward to success. So as we focus in that space, project managers have that responsibility to provide the clear communication. Actually, 90% of what we do as project managers is communicate. And so it's really critical uh, for projects. Effective leadership, creating an atmosphere where the project team feels motivated, engaged, inspired, and focused on achieving the work and exercising empathy. Again, generative AI can't do that. People can do that. Project managers lead in that space and develop those strong relationships with people to build trust by listening and addressing conflict and leading with empathy. Mm -hmm. that, that's such a great point. It really is about that that human touch of being able to, you know, when you're talking about keeping a project going, there's so many factors that come in and some of them are are just that interpersonal factor that you might only pick up in a conversation and an AI tool wouldn't be able to tell that by how people are logging to right. time on a project, things like that. It's great. Um, you know, and we're talking about changing and adapting to the times here. Um, we have to have tech literacy. We really do. It's an essential skill for project managers. Uh, and when we do, it'll help us recognize that we can change how we allocate our time instead of focusing on the administration of uh, uh, you know, what we're doing and how we're doing it. It frees us up to do more value driven work like developing the team and building that team to success. That's where our power skills come in play. Those power skills inspire the team to communicate with stakeholders and build team confidence. Those are the project manager power skills that help us be successful. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, let's talk a little bit too, because um, I know through your work and your connections to PMI, uh, there's been, there's been some studies conducted. Um, you know, can you tell us a little bit about what you've learned through that? Yeah, absolutely. They just produced their initial results from over 1500 project managers worldwide and 88% think that AI is going to have a big impact in the project management space. And they also recognize that 64% just say that maturity in the organization right now in AI is low. We're all learning, right? It's a learning journey. And most of the project managers worldwide have not had experience yet working on AI projects. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll yeah, also definitely. say, yeah, no, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, it kind of speaks to the point too of how quickly these things have evolved over the year that so many tools are still coming out and businesses take, you know, months or even years to implement new tools and new processes. Yeah, that's a great point. And just this past month in September, they finalized the second round of that. And on our next uh, slide here, we talk yeah. about when that's going to become available. So over 22 chapters helped develop this survey in conjunction with the global organization of PMI and finish that second round in September. In March, they're going to have those results. So I'd, I'd love to come back and share those results, results with you. <laughs> But I, I have a feeling we'll stay connected and we'll be able to make that happen for sure. Lo looking forward to that. Um, yeah. Tell, yeah. Tell us a little bit more, um, you know, about PMI and, and how people can get involved and learn about this work. Yeah. This one last thing here is to help recognize two things. One, that PMI is at the forefront for project managers. They've developed a generative AI overview for project managers that's free. That includes free project uh, professional development units for those people who are PMP certified and recognize too that color is important. It focuses here, generative AI does, on the ways of working. It won't have impact on our power skills as project managers. That's what we do best. And it doesn't change our need to have business acumen uh, as we lead projects. So you can leverage this link here, this QR code, to go and take that generative AI overview. Perfect. And, uh, and I'll leave the link in the comments after the show as well for uh, for everybody else tuning in, tuning in here. Awesome. Jeff, Jeff, this was great. I feel like I feel like I learned a ton. I feel like I feel like everybody else here is going to learn a ton. So thank you so much for bringing this presentation to Live with Lighthouse here. Really appreciate it. We're going to close with one last question here. Um, I'm going to put sure. you on the spot. <laughs> going to put you on the spot a little bit. A uh, question that we ask all of our guests. Um, this show really started in the spirit of we often say be a lighthouse as, as a phrase of just kind of guiding our work, helping people, leading the ways to the solutions they need. Uh, so I wanted to give you the opportunity here um, to give a shout out to someone 
this week who's supported you or helped you learn something new? Oh, well, I appreciate that. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. You and Randy and the team at Lighthouse have been fantastic to work with. So love working with you guys. And I'll, I'll just say that uh, the team that I'm working with, the organization I'm in right now, has been tremendously supportive of me, of the work that we're doing, and of being on the forefront of leveraging generative AI in our project management space to help deliver value. So that's uh, th those, those folks are awesome. <laughs> Inc incredible. Thanks so much. And uh, for anybody who's watching this, uh, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you if they want to connect or learn more? I'm always on LinkedIn. You can also connect to Jeff at dramjamconsulting.com. You see that down below. Uh, I'm on all the socials. Perfect. Love it. Always, always good to, to be to be public, be available, be able to connect with people. So, Jeff, thanks so much. We're going to wrap it up here. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in to Live with Lighthouse this week. Really appreciate your expertise, Jeff. Thanks so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Have a great one. Thanks, Go everyone. Bills. Go Bills.